three years ago, I made one of the scariest decisions of my life. I dropped out of high school with no degree, no plan, and no idea what I was going to do next. Just six months later, after teaching myself how to code, I landed my first job as a junior front-end developer at Czech24, one of Germany's leading tech companies. I didn't have a computer science degree. I didn't attend a boot camp. I didn't even do an internship just self-discipline, a lot of late nights, and a dream that refused to die. And here's the crazy part. I'm dyslexic, hearing impaired, and was once considered the worst student in my entire class. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how I went from being a lost dropout to a software engineer. Anyone can do the same, no matter where you're from, who you are, or how old you are. Before I dive in, hi, I'm Miraya. As I'm recording this, I'm 22 years old, living in Germany and working as a design engineer and social media content creator. On this channel, I share everything from my real-time learning and building process to front-end dev tutorials, aesthetic desk setups, productivity tools, career tips for self-taught developers, and sometimes even a bit of lifestyle. But before any of this existed, my life looked very, very different. I was born and raised in Stockholm, Sweden, a place I still call home in many ways. Growing up, my childhood was filled with creativity. I loved to draw, build Lego sets, make things out of paper. I was that kid who always wanted to create something new, but I also had something that made school a little harder for me. I was hearing impaired. Because of that, I went to a special school for kids with hearing difficulties. And honestly, it was one of the best things that could have happened to me. At that school, teachers understood us. There were only eight kids per class, so we all got attention. The teachers always faced us when they spoke, so we could read their lips. We each had our own iPads and laptops with our names printed on them. Even the classrooms were designed to be calm, warm, and easy to follow. We had taxis that picked us up from home and dropped us back after school. Hot meals every day, and a real sense of community. We were different, but we belonged. It was such a caring, technology-driven environment. Everything was modern, organized, and built for our success. But when I was 13, everything changed. My family moved from Sweden to Germany, and suddenly the world I knew disappeared overnight. The language was different. The people acted differently. Even the school system felt like something out of a different century. In Germany, there are three main types of high schools. Hauptschule for practical jobs, Realschule, more academic but still middle ground, Gymnasium, the highest level designed to prepare you for university. Normally, teachers recommend which one you should attend after primary school. But because I came from another country, I had to take placement tests and somehow they put me straight into a gymnasium. I remember my first day so clearly a huge classroom filled with 28 students. The teacher turned around, writing on a chalkboard. No one spoke English, and there I was, trying to lip-read German words I didn't even understand. I felt lost, completely out of place. At that age, all I wanted was to fit in, but it felt impossible. I had to repeat two entire school years because of the language barrier. So suddenly, I was older than everyone in my class. In Sweden, I had always been the youngest. Now, I was the oldest and still the one who didn't understand anything. I'd sit in class pretending to take notes, but really, I was just staring at the board, hoping the lesson would end soon. My grades dropped, F after F after F. The only subjects I could pass were English, art, and sports. Everything else felt like climbing a mountain with weights on my back, and being dyslexic made it even harder. For me, dyslexia isn't about seeing letters flipped, it's about how my brain processes words. I can read, but it takes effort. Sometimes I skip lines without realizing it. Sometimes I reread the same sentence 10 times and still don't get it. And the more I try to force it, the less my brain listens. Reading for me is like swimming on the water. Possible, but exhausting. Those school years were probably the hardest time of my life. I didn't have real friends. People talked to me, but I never felt close to anyone. I'd go home right after school, sit alone, and draw for hours. Drawing became my escape. It was the one thing that didn't judge me, didn't ask for grades, didn't need explanations. Just me, my pen, and silence. Sometimes I'd stay up late, sketching designs or doodles, imagining a future where I could actually do something creative for a living. One day, I decided I wanted to turn that creativity into something real. I loved art, and I thought, why not become a tattoo artist? 
So I saved up and bought a tattoo kit from Amazon. It came with fake practice skin, a machine, and some ink. Every day after school I practiced, sometimes until midnight. Soon I tattooed my first real person, my mom's friend, then a few strangers. At first I did it for free, just to gain confidence, but then people started offering to pay. They liked my work, the details, the designs, and that changed everything. By the time I was 17, I was making 3,000 to 4,000 euros a month from tattoos. I even opened a small studio. For the first time in my life, I felt successful. I wasn't the stupid girl from school anymore. I was an artist, and people came to me for my skill. But life has a funny way of humbling you. When COVID hit, everything stopped. Tattoo studios across Germany had to shut down. At first, I thought it would only be for a few weeks. Weeks turned into months. Months turned into pure panic. No clients, no income, no backup plan. I had bills, personal expenses, and I helped my family whenever I could. The business I had built from scratch was suddenly gone. And with it, my confidence. It was one of those moments where you look in the mirror and think, okay, what now? When restrictions lifted a bit, my parents opened a small restaurant, fast food and Asian dishes, burgers, sushi, rolls. I helped them every single day. I cooked, I cleaned, I served customers. It was a real family effort and I was proud to support them. But deep down, I knew this wasn't what I wanted for the rest of my life. Then one day, my mom found out she was pregnant. She was the main cook, my dad handled deliveries and I was the helper. When she couldn't work anymore, we had to close the restaurant. And just like that, once again, I had nothing. I couldn't help the family, I wasn't earning money, and I felt completely lost. I kept overthinking what to do next, how to become stable. And my frustration was at its absolute maximum. One evening, I walked into my brother's room. He was sitting there, typing insanely fast on his laptop. I asked, what are you doing, hacking? He laughed and said, no, programming. And that moment changed my entire life. I had no idea what programming even was, since I wasn't a technical person at all. He showed me a few lines of code, and I remember thinking, what is this alien language? He said, it's JavaScript. And I just laughed. There's no way I could ever learn that. But then he told me something I'll never forget. I didn't understand any of this when I started either. I taught myself, you can too. At first, I didn't believe him. I thought, I'm not a tech person, I'm dyslexic. I can barely read instructions. How am I supposed to understand code? But he kept encouraging me. He even gave me the exact roadmap he used. Videos, blogs, resources, projects. That's when I decided to give it a try. But why did I even believe I could do it? Because my brother wasn't some traditional genius with a degree. He dropped out of high school. He's only one year older than me. No degree, no boot camp, no internship, nothing. And despite all that, he taught himself and built a six-figure career. Today, he's one of the top engineers I know. He even worked at Lovable. People who followed my journey since the very beginning on LinkedIn already know exactly who he is. The first few weeks were pure chaos. HTML made sense. CSS was okay. But then JavaScript hit me like a train. I'm not gonna lie, I cried multiple times while learning it. The JavaScript phase was intense. Today people learn with AI, which is amazing. But back then, there was no chat GPT for me. I used GitHub repos, Stack Overflow, random blogs, anything I could find. It was not easy, but I'm grateful I had parents behind me and siblings supporting me, believing in me when I barely believed in myself. It was really hard, but I kept going. I made a promise to myself, no matter what, I won't quit. Every day I studied 10 to 12 hours. I swore I wouldn't do anything else until I understood this. I even deleted every social media app from my phone. Coding was going to be my life until I got a job. If I wasn't coding, I was watching tutorials or reading documentation. My life became a loop. Wake up at 4 a.m. code, eat code, sleep, repeat. And after a while, something changed. Things started to click. Concepts that once confused me suddenly made sense. When I reached React, everything connected. It felt like all the chaos finally came together. I built small projects, then bigger ones. I failed hundreds of times, but every failure made me better. I even got stuck in tutorial hell and got out of it only because my brother forced me to stop watching tutorials and start actually building. Yes, my brother gave me the roadmap, but I had to do the work, research, learn, fail, and learn again. And trust me, he wasn't gentle about it. 
There was no nice, you got this with clapping hands. It felt more like military training. But honestly, it was worth it. After six months, I was ready. His plan worked. The job search was brutal. I applied to over 50 jobs every single day. You can do the math. That's more than a thousand applications in a month. Most never replied. Some rejected me instantly. And the few interviews I did get didn't go the way I hoped. One interviewer told me, you're talented, but without a degree, we can't take you seriously. Another offered me an unpaid internship instead of a real job. It was frustrating. And slowly, I started doubting myself again. But my brother told me something that stuck with me. You only need one yes. Keep going until you find it. So I did. My goal wasn't to find the perfect company. My goal was simply to get a real job, not another internship. I just needed one company to give me a chance, somewhere I could finally learn, grow and get real work experience. Then one day, I got an email from Check24. The backend team lead had found my GitHub profile. He said, we've never seen someone this consistent before. A few days later, I had an interview with the front-end team lead. It wasn't like the others, it felt like a real conversation. We talked about my journey, what I built, and how I learned. Then he invited me to a test day. My task was to recreate a burger website using React. I worked on it from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m., a full day. I gave it everything. They even told me I could take the whole day if I needed. It was also a get to know each other day. My future teammates and I went out for lunch together. When I finished, I explained my code to the team, the front end team lead and the front end dev lead. They nodded, smiled, and then one of them asked, do you want to work here? I froze for a second because of course I did. Like that's literally why I was there. I was confused and then the other guy laughed and pulled out a stack of papers. I looked at it and realized it was the contract. All the long nights, the breakdowns, the rejections, it all paid off. My parents had been waiting for me in the car the whole time to pick me up. When I walked out with a contract and showed them, they were so happy for me and so proud. And honestly, so was I. At 19 years old, I was officially a software engineer, or better said, a front-end engineer. That job didn't just change my career, it changed my life. It taught me that you don't need to be perfect. You don't need university. You don't even need to be smart in the traditional sense. What you do need is consistency and discipline and the belief that you can learn anything, even when the world tells you that you can't. If you're watching this and you feel stuck, maybe you failed school, maybe you feel lost, maybe you think it's too late, please understand, it's not. Your background doesn't define you, your choices do. I went from being the kid who couldn't read a paragraph with Without getting frustrated to building full websites and working as a front-end engineer in Germany. If I can do it, you can too. I've linked my six-month learning roadmap down below, the same one my brother gave me. Start today, because the truth is your story doesn't begin when life gets easy. It begins the moment you choose not to give up. And remember, whether you start or not, time will pass anyway. Time is never on your side, so use it.